Okay, everybody, hello and welcome to exam objective 2.3 of the A plus 1101 exam where we're going to be doing a practice exam for this one and only specific exam objective. So we're going to really focus in and hone in on it and destroy it to make sure you're ready for your exam. Let's just go ahead and first of all, take a look at what we're going to be actually diving into for this exam objective. We're going to be having a look at frequencies. What are the frequencies? What are the differences between them? Uh, we're going to be looking at different channels how that relates to the frequencies. We're going to look at Bluetooth, the different wireless standards, otherwise known as 802.11 standards, standards A, B, G, N, A, C, and A, X. We're going to be looking at long range fixed wireless, what you need to do that, what you need to consider when setting that up, what it even is. And we're going to be looking at NFC. You should know that by now. We've looked at it so many times. And RFID. We're going to look at all that right now. Coming up, going to make it quick, going to make it snappy, going to test your knowledge, but also going to make it educational. So let's get straight into it with question number one. Alexander is looking to implement 802.11 within his home office. He is considering implementing 802.11n, but does not know enough about it yet. Which of the following is not true about 802.11n? A, it reaches speeds of 600 megabits. B, it has a 40 megahertz channel bandwidth. C, it introduced MUMIMO. Or D, it can operate on a 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz frequency. And the answer is C, introduced. M-U-M-I-M-O, which stands for multiple user, multiple input, multiple output. So guys, for this, essentially what you need to know, you need to make sure you know this. I can't explain all of these in this video just because it is, uh, it, it's a lot to, to, to put it simply, um, but you're gonna need to know the difference between each of the standards. You're gonna need to know the frequencies that they operate on. You're gonna need to know the speeds that they operate at. And you're gonna to need to know if they do multiple input, multiple output, put, or if they do multiple user, multiple input, multiple output. I'm not gonna go into depth on what those are now, but if you don't know what they are and you're confused about it, go away and research it. Professor Messer does great stuff on it. My learning guide at journeydesabi.com also goes into great detail on it as well. So that being said, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next question. What equipment is essential to establish a point-to-point -point connection between corporate buildings for a wireless network? A, fixed directional antennas. B, built-in antennas. C, wireless routers. Or D, high gain amplifiers. And the answer is, B, fixed directional antennas. So essentially guys, to get a connection from one building to another building, you need to really direct that uh, the signal uh, over to the other building. You know, a Wi-Fi uh, access point is not gonna cut it. You gotta direct it over there with a uh, directional antenna essentially. And um, some more relevant information on, on that topic of doing that essentially, uh, you got generally built-in antennas at home. You got a range of 40 to 50 meters but that's not enough to connect to another building. Uh, in corporate environments, you might need a directional Yagi antenna uh, in order to get that point-to-point -point connection to link those two buildings up. When you're setting it up, you gotta know what your local rules and regulations are as well. Make sure you follow those. Nothing specific for your exam about what those rules and regulations are. More so specifically, just know that you need to take them into account, right? That's all you really need to know there. Um, ideally, you wanna hire a professional to do it. If that's an option, definitely make sure you select that one. Um, and yeah, make sure you know about government regulations, things to that effect. Take government regulations and safety considerations and relevant policies into your consideration when deciding to do this. Is really kind of what you need to know in relation to that, as far as I'm aware. In relation to this for your exam, you're going to need to know uh, pretty much everything we just went through, right? Just look. Put it simple, read the slide if you want to, consider government regulations. If you wanna get something from one building to another building, you wanna get that signal from one building to another building, you need a directional antenna. That's mostly it. Read that stuff if you, if you want more detail, but understand that those basic concepts, you should be sweet, guys.
Next question, let's take a squiz at it. Riley wants to purchase a new phone and needs to ensure it will allow him to pay for things by simply tapping his phone against the card reader. What technology does he need to ensure the phone uses? A, Bluetooth, B, CDMA, C, NFC, or D, 802.11AF? And the answer is, we should know it by now, C, NFC. Guys, if you're using your phone to tap and pay for things, you're using near field communication technology. You're using NFC. We've been through this maybe two or three times now throughout the exam objectives. It seems to be popping up a lot. Just know that if you're paying for things with your phone, it's NFC. Um, more information here if you want to pause and read that, but we've been through it so many times now that, um, you know, look, look, long story short, you hold two objects in close proximity, they communicate, some sort of data transfer takes place. When you pay for things, it's NFC. Understand that if you're holding two, vice, two devices in close proximity and some data transfer happens, it's, it's probably gonna be NFC occurring there, right? More information on the slide there if you wanna read that, but alternatively, yeah, that, that, just get the gist of that and you'll be sweet. Some other options, Bluetooth, of course, we know what Bluetooth is, it's a wireless communication technology that lets devices connect to each other and you create a personal area network or a PAN through Bluetooth. And, and it generally has a range of about 10 meters, right? So, you know, wireless mouse, wireless headset, that's Bluetooth, we know that. Another one was CDMA or code division multiple access. We talked about that in the, the cell phone exam objective. We already looked at that a little bit, so I'm not gonna go into too much depth there, but that's related to cell phones. It's a type of cell phone technology. And then 802.11af is not even related to the exam objective, so I'm not even going to talk about it because I don't want to give you more information than you need. So let's go ahead and get on to the next question. In a retail store, employees use a technology to track inventory and prevent theft. This technology is commonly found in the form of small tags attached to items. What technology is being used? A. Bluetooth B. NFC C. RFID or D, Wi-Fi? The answer is C, RFID. So this one might have been a little bit confusing, guys. So NFC and RFID are similar, but keep into consideration the reasons they're used and also the range there. That might help you in those tricky question times. Now, if you're interested, there's some additional explanation here on RFID and NFC. Pause to have a read. I'm not gonna read off the slides, guys, but load just quickly, like I said, the range and the reason that it's used, right? Those are kind of the main things that you need to know in order to uh, really master questions relating to these two things. Now, when it comes to this, you might be asked, based on the scenario, is RFID being used? Based on the requirements, do we need RFID? Uh, what is RFID and how does RFID work? All right, so be ready to answer those kinds of questions and you'll be sweet, guys. All right, and the final question for this exam objective quiz, guys. Which of the following statements accurately describes a key difference between the five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz frequencies in wireless networking? A the five gigahertz frequency provides longer wireless range compared to 2.4 gigahertz. B, five gigahertz is less susceptible to interference from household devices like microwaves compared to 2.4 gigahertz. C, devices using the 2.4 gigahertz frequency generally experience higher data transfer rates than those on five gigahertz. Or D, five gigahertz has better penetration through walls and obstacles when compared to 2.4 gigahertz. And the answer is B, five gigahertz is less susceptible to interference from household devices like microwaves when compared to 2.4 gigahertz. So guys, some information for you to read there, but long story short, 5G, shorter range, uh, less susceptible to interference, higher speeds. 2.4 gigahertz, longer range, more susceptible to interference. Additionally, 2.4 generally has less channels to choose from, 5G has five gigahertz has more channels to choose from. So that's a rough overview of the benefits. If you're kind of confused on those, make sure you look into it. I can't give all the details and information right here, but 
you know, if you feel comfortable about that, fantastic. You're ready to conquer it in your exam. If you don't, then not so much. Now guys, if you found value in this video, make sure you go to journeydecyber.com and check out my comprehensive learning guide where I break things down, not only by exam objective, but by each point within that exam objective and by each dot point within that point of the exam objective. Each one of those sections having the following uh, detailed and comprehensive notes. You've got active recall questions, scenario based and basic questions with detailed explanations and then learning activities specifically targeted at areas where I think you need them. So that's at journeytocyber.com. Go grab that if you want a full on guide through the A plus 1101 certification. And on top of that, I also have five practice exams with performance based questions ready to go. And you can grab both of those together for a low, low price of 50 Australian dollars, which really is super affordable guys. If you want to smash this exam, on a budget, that's where you want to be, journeytocyber.com. All right, guys, I will see you next time for exam objective 2.4. Ready to smash that with you, ready to get that out of the way. You did great in this one, and I will see you there. Bye, guys.